And what I recognize is I had tapped into something that I had walked away from uh, well over a decade or so ago. And I went back to my hotel room that night in Paris and I asked myself three questions. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would I do if no one paid me to do it? What makes me come alive? And that third question came out of a book uh, that I was reading at the time, and it's the quote from the philosopher Howard Thurman. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive, because what the world needs are people who come alive. Greetings, greetings, everyone, and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You. I am your host, Coach Charlene, and I am very excited that I have Simon T. Bailey in the house. So welcome to the show, Simon. I am so happy to be here, Coach Charlene. Wow, I made it to your show, finally. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. You will, you, I cannot wait to hear this juicy content that Simon has, you guys. So you are in for a treat. But first, I wanted to read Simon's bio because it was so awesome. So let me just do that a little bit. Then, Simon, I'm going to ask you even more if you would like to share after I read your bio. So, recognized as a drill, trailblazer in his field, Simon's dedication to transformation has earned him a spot at one of Success Magazine's top 25, joining Brene Brown, Tony Robbins, and Oprah Winfrey. This is a testament to his extraordinary impact on the lives of countless individuals around the globe. But who is this enigmatic figure? And how has he ascended to such stratospheric heights? Venture with us deep into the annals of Simon T. Bailey's extraordinary journey and prepare to be captivated. With the Disney Institute as his launch pad, Bailey's trajectory has been nothing short of meteoric. For over two decades, he has mesmerized the world, leaving an indelible mark on 2,003 plus organizations across 54 countries, giants like American Express, Deloitte, Marriott, Visa, Stanford Healthcare, and Taco Bell have all experienced his magnetic allure. He captivates audiences through his books, speeches, and practical coaching strategies. Brace for impact as the titan of inspiration propels diverse audiences toward a brilliant future where they can lead better, stay curious, and develop a growth mindset. The stage is set, the curtain is drawn, and the world now is ready for your brilliance. And welcome again, Simon. Wow, what a bio. I want to meet this guy. Who is this guy? <laughs> I'm serious. He is like the bomb. <laughs> so that was really beautiful. So why don't you tell me a little bit more about Simon? Very simple. I am the husband of Jody. We have four amazing children, uh, three daughters, one son from 21 to 28. We're brand new grandparents. Halo is 19 months old. She's our granddaughter. Oh I told her I'm too young to be a granddad, so I'm G-pop. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I like that, J-pop. Yeah. And, uh, I'm kind of like grandma. I'm a grandma. Yeah. Grandma. <laughs> we live in Orlando, Florida, and every day I wake up to do one thing, and that is to help people uh, understand that encouragement is oxygen for the soul. So who can we encourage Ooh. by hugging people with our words and letting them know that they are absolutely positively brilliant. So that's what we do. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the way that I came across you, um, Simon, I was um, I was on LinkedIn. And so I was, I'm always I, I kind of I'm a kind of a person of prayer. So I was kind of praying and I was like, just like scanning and scanning. And then, boom, I was drawn toward you. I can't forget what the post was. But it was so profound that I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> and then I Googled you and looked you up and I was like, oh, my God. And I just like start buying books and <laughs> start reading it. And I just like I, I can't even explain to you what your release, your brilliant. I think it's releasing your brilliance did to my spirit mm. and my soul 
in my body in one moment. And I knew that I was supposed to read it immediately when I start reading it. So I just really, really am grateful. And that's kind of how I found you. So I kind of was like, hey, I'm this new podcast and I would love to hear from you. So I really am so grateful to be here because I think people are going to be extremely blessed. So tell us, um, Simon, a little bit about the reason why I really started when the moment chooses you was kind of like in 2020 when uh, the murder of George Floyd happened. It sent me to a place that I did not like for myself with the anger. And because usually I'm a very loving person and I can kind of move past things pretty fast, but that moment jarred me back. And so I had to go into prayer and I did. And it, then I heard these words, what you do in this moment will determine your destiny and dictate your future. And so I knew I had to move from anguish and frustration to action and impact. Mm -hmm. And I start raising my voice. I start sharing my story because I had not shared it in like 20 years. And I start sharing the stories that I was, um, you know, the situations I was dealing with as a leader. And it really transformed everything that I'm doing now. So these moments that call us into them. Uh, are so amazing. So I wanted to hear if you had in a couple of moments that you could share with us uh, that would inspire us too. Yeah. One of the moments that sticks out for me is I was working for Disney at the time and I was in Paris. I had just designed a leadership program on behalf of Disney 4,000 leaders on a Barclays Bank out of London. And Lion King had just come out and I'm on stage sharing this program, and I said, remember who you are. You are more than what you have become, which is one of the famous lines in the movie. And some people came up to me afterward, and they said, we had goosebumps the entire time you were talking, and it was not from the air condition. And what I recognize is I had tapped into something that I had walked away from uh, well over a decade or so ago. And I went back to my hotel room that night in Paris and I asked myself three questions. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What would I do if no one paid me to do it? What makes me come alive? And that third question came out of a book uh, that I was reading at the time. And it's the quote from the philosopher Howard Thurman. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs are people who come alive. And coach, it was like the 4th of July fireworks went off in me because I said, I want to speak, right, train, consult, and coach. And what I recognize is when it is time for you to own the moment, you will come to a place of frustration. And frustration is a gift because it is that invitation that says your season has ended where you are and you are being invited into a greater reality that would unleash the next dimension of your potential. So your potential is not released on the level that you are on because that's the familiar. Your potential is released in a new dimension where it's unfamiliar, where you don't know what you don't know, but you begin to trust the process and you stop looking through the rear view mirror of where you've been and you look through the windshield of where you're going. And when you own that moment, that moment creates momentum. And momentum creates monumental results. Reverse engineer, monumental results come from the momentum. And the root word of momentum is moments. Mm. Wow. Okay. You just like, okay, for real. <laughs> Simon, that was so profound. Really profound. Frustration. That frustration, I call it the unrest. Mm -hmm you know, not able to sleep really good because there's something calling you. There's something trying to get you to move into it. And so with what you just said, how do people move past that barrier of wanting to do something, but trying to stay comfortable? Any ideas on that? Number one, pay attention to what continues to cause unrest in your soul, okay? When I say unrest in your soul, it's the tap on the shoulder that gets you out of the bed uh, in the wee hours of the morning. You go to the refrigerator, you open the refrigerator and you close it back, not taking anything out of the refrigerator because it's not as if you were hungry or thirsty. The hunger or thirst is in the core of your soul. Mm 
So as you are paying attention to what's coming up, number one, number two, your dreams. Dreams are sneak previews of a coming attraction. So what are you dreaming about? What are you imagining? And you, somebody might be listening and say, Simon, I don't dream or imagine. Well, hold on. Are there times throughout the day where you daydream about something else? That's a sneak preview of what's coming up in your spirit and in your soul. And then the third thing is to take time at the end of the day and just reflect, how did I grow today? And the moment you stop uh, asking that question, you stop living because growth is wow. about moving into the future. So when I ask myself, how did I grow today? It could just be one micro step, one idea you learned, you saw, you listened, you felt, you heard, you were a part of, and you grew a little bit better than the day before. The moment you stop growing in a place, that is the time to assess what else can I do? Mm. Mm. Okay. Wow. That's really powerful. You know, I w I'm wondering, um, Simon, how did you, I mean, you're an absolute trailblazer, change agent and all those other words for that, but how did you transition from doing what you were doing to, you know, that moment where you said, okay, no, I'm going to be a speaker. I'm going to be a writer. Like, how was that transition for you? Yeah, the first thing is I began to share with the mother of my children that I was sensing uh, this this time to make a move. And when I left Disney 20 years ago, our country's going to war with the rock for the second time. Corporations were laying off by the hundreds of thousands. And everyone at Disney said, you are crazy. You are leaving. What are you doing? But here's why I left. She said to me, Whatever you decide to do, I'm with you. And when I knew that we were on the same page and that we were one, at the time uh, Daniel was four, Madison was 18 months old, uh, Daniel's now 24, Madison's 21. And I said, okay, she's with me. So I turned down uh, four job offers, just turned them down, turned them down, said, no, nope, I got to go for this. Because I didn't want to live with the pain of regret of wondering mm. why didn't I? So number one, I had to make sure I was aligned with uh, my spouse, mother, and my children. The second thing is I recognized, I looked at my age and I'll never forget a conversation I had with one of my mentors, uh, a gentleman named Tudor Bismarck, who lives in Harare, Zimbabwe. Mm. And uh, mm. he said to me, I was having dinner with him uh, almost 15 years ago in Zimbabwe. And he said to me, do you have a strategic life plan? And I said, why do I need a strategic life plan? He says, because in 10 years, you will be 10 years older, but will you be better? huge epiphany for me. And I said, oh my goodness. So being better is not doing this big thing out here. It's about every single day getting better in here. One little micro step to get better. That became the catalyst for me harnessing how I began to, to, to make that transition and to do the work that I'm doing now. And I think probably the third thing is I decided to get up an hour earlier uh, than I normally would, and I would spend that hour working on the future me. And in that mm. hour, I would meditate, I would write, and I would do something. And what I discovered, a little becomes a lot over a long period of time. It's breaking it down. It's chunking it down. So point in case, I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. And what I've been doing over the last 30 days is every day I get up and I walk. I got in almost 8,000 steps today, according to my Fitbit. I then came and did a seven minute exercise. And then I went and did six laps in the pool because I'm trying to learn how to swim even at this age. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> my, hey, I need to be there with you on that one. <laughs> my wife said to me this morning, she said, babe, you're losing weight. I said, yes. I said, because I got to keep up with this fine young wife I got. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. Um, wow, what a great transition. Thank you for that. I really, uh, you're like so feeding my soul. I just want you to know that. Um, so I'm curious though, the last three years, you know, with the double pandemic, our own personal pandemic, a lot of people experience such burnout and trauma and loss and all of those adjectives. How did you make it through that? Because I'm, I'm listening to you speak and this has been your life. This is the way that you live. How did that, how you are now help you through the pandemic or did you still have major challenges as well? In the spirit of full disclosure, I was probably more bitter than better at the beginning of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. I binged on eating and binged on Netflix and did all of the things that uh, I encourage people to, to do, but to do it in moderation, I went overboard. And then I had a moment where I had to stop crying over spilled milk. I had to stop feeling sorry for almost seven figures worth of business disappearing, contracted business disappearing in seven days. And uh, living with the woe is me of after being married for 25 years, went through a divorce, just got remarried, two kids in college, uh, paying alimony. It, it's real. Right. And then yeah. right before that time, I got diagnosed with prostate cancer. Thank goodness I'm over it. Did all my work. Uh, I am I am clean and free. But what I recognize is do I stay bitter? Or do I get better? And what I started to do is to eat my own cooking. So I had mm. to take, as my friend Kathy Romero would say, I had to take my meds. I had to meditate, exercise, diet, and sleep. I'm going to say that again for everyone listening. Meditate, exercise, diet, and sleep. So what I was doing, Coach, is I was taking control of the steering wheel of uncertainty instead of being driven by the backseat yes. passengers of stress, fear, anxiety, and depression. And yes. I recognized no one was coming to save me. And I had to return to, for me, prayer is everything. So I had to return to uh, building my faith in prayer and saying, okay, God, I don't know where this is going, but I so trust you to get me mm. through. And that's how I was able to come out of the nosedive <laughs> and yes, to find yeah, altitude yeah. again. <laughs> oh my gosh, One day at that's time. amazing. One day at yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I noticed and I know and I'd love for you to talk to us about all of your different books, but um, I'm starting to um, I'm kind of almost at the end of releasing your brilliance. But I noticed that you talk about the diamonds yes. a lot in that particular book. And um, so I'm just wondering why why did you pick the diamond so, in particular? Yeah, my mentor said to me a number of years ago, you weren't born to fit in. You were born to be brilliant. And I mm. said to him, I said, how can you say that? Uh, he said, you're stuck in your mind and your body thinking the pigmentation of your skin limits you. And I am here to tell you that you weren't born to fit in. You're born to be brilliant. And when he said it, it unlocked something in me. And I started doing a lot of research to understand brilliant and brilliance. Well, you don't go very mm -hmm. far unless you stumble upon a diamond. And as I began to yes. study about a diamond, as you know, a diamond is formed through heat, pressure and change. And when I realized the heat and the pressure and the change that I was going through, I recognized that everyone has brilliance in them, but they have to tap into the, the, the DNA system that causes them to thrive and reach their full potential. So there are people listening to us right now, you are a diamond or diamond in the rough, but what allows you to reach your full potential is the environment. Every diamond is put into a setting. And in that setting, we begin to understand the color, the carrot, the cut, right? 
of the diamond. And, and, and as we begin to understand the setting or the environment, as the light hits it, as strife and worry and things that happen in life hits that diamond, it shines from the inside yes. out. So that's how the whole yes. diamond uh, came to be for me. Oh my God. It's just amazing. I'm just saying you guys just, you guys just have to get all of his books. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> that's what I'm doing because I want to absolutely grow. I mean, just after reading a few chapters, I was just like gone because it's so like literally every page is inspiring. It really wow. speaks to your soul. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm wondering, um, Simon, because I know we don't have a lot of time left. I'd love for you to give the audience three wisdom gems, Simon's top three wisdom gems. Wow. Um, and it can be on life, uh, whatever you decide, whatever you're feeling, um, that can really inspire other people. Wow. So the first thing I would say, forgive. Wherever you show up in life, forgive and let it go because so many times we hold on to things long past their expiration date and they cause us to be stuck in neutral number two love with no strings attached when you choose to love in spite of how someone is treating you and you come from a place of joy and love you become healing presence for wherever that person is, whatever is happening in that moment. So love with no strings attached. And then third, go for it. Whatever you are deciding to do, I submit to you, this is not a dress rehearsal. The reason you weren't born in the 18th century is because you weren't needed. You exist now at this century. In the moment you step into your destiny and your purpose, you will discover that whenever you walk into a grocery store, the doors automatically open because the moment you step on to the sensors, the sensors pick up and they open for you. But the doors would never open until you step and move forward. Okay. So the moment you step and move forward, everybody that has been assigned to aid and help you will show up almost as if they have been summons for you, uh, summons to you because you decided to go for it. So all I can share with you is when I made that decision, everything else lined up. And here's the reality. I was just in Denver the other day and a guy came up to me and said, I got a hold of Release Your Brilliance, the audio book. And he said, I have been teaching from it. And what he didn't realize, next year, that book will be 20 years old. I wrote that book right. 20 years ago when I was in this place of just find, trying to find my brilliance. So go for it. Oh, my God. Okay, so if I could get up and run around, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I would I mean, absolutely doing that because mm. that was so profound. I'm not even going to say any more about that. But I'm wondering if you uh, well, I would love to share um, you to share what resources, what you do. Is there in a way that people can get in touch with you? Any programs you have? Uh, just take it. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to Ignite the Power of Women, uh, dot com, Ignite the Power of Women, it's my latest book and something that we've decided to do was to give you a free one year impact success plan. Uh, it is my belief that any organization community that's going to be worth its salt must do right by women. And here's the deal. Mm. It's not as if women, you need your power ignited. It's really a guide for men to understand that a man cannot come into his full potential personally or professionally, until he honors the brilliance of the women in his life. And the moment you do that, that unlocks you to move into a whole nother uh, destiny of reality. So uh, certainly you can follow me on all social media, Simon T. Bailey.com. And our website is simontbailey.com. We've launched something called Brilliant You. And Brilliant You is this community 
where uh, we are really trying to help people understand how to have digital resilience to increase their productivity. So I teach mm. in just snackable bites with just a little weekly prompt for something that you can do. Because what I recognize is brilliance is not doing a bunch of things. Uh, in the words of Dr. Gene Watson, who has tremendously impacted my life, it is about being belonging and becoming. So at Brilliant yes. You, we teach you how to do it. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I am so honored to have had you on the show. I really am. And I'm telling you, it was so explosive, these 20 minutes that we were together. And I mean, me personally, I will be definitely <laughs> signing up for that. And, um, and you also have programs, coaching programs yes. too, yes. right? I think I saw that. Okay, awesome. Okay, one more piece of wisdom from Simon, and then we're going. Oh end. my goodness! I'm so glad you said this because <laughs> I have I have been chewing on this, and and this is the first place I get to say this. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend your years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. This is a poem that was written on the wall in Mother Teresa's home for children in Calcutta. Oh my God, that was profound. And so rich. Boy, if we could live like that, Simon, if we could just live like that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you so much for being on the show. I will be putting details in um, Simon's description so you can pull it up and definitely engage. I will be engaging as well. So thank you so much for showing, I mean, showing up today in such brilliance. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. 